Welcome back you watching news room I'm your host Umar Khalid but the global scenario is changing the geopolitics or uh, geoeconomics or geo strategy of the world is changing new alliances are being formed a uh, new world order seems to be in the making uh, and of course countries and uh, their groupings have also changed uh, the Russia Ukraine war or other issues across the world have really turned the tables around for the world what are the new alliances that are in the making what is the new global order that is slowly and steadily evolving what are the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead as far as this global world order is concerned to talk about that that we've been joined uh, by uh, air marshal farhad hussain khan hilal ahmed military he is the president of uh, the center for aerospace and security studies that is located in rawalpindi thank you very much sir to have thank joined us much. sir uh, in this uh, whole scenario of uh, geopolitical and geo strategic and geo economic changes that we are seeing especially in the last year or so since the ukraine russia conflict began uh, the different sectors have been affected and your sector also that is the aerospace sector uh, and the applications kinetic and non kinetic have forced states to rethink future doctrines strategies and warfare what is pakistan coming up with what are the strategies that pakistan is trying to evolve itself into okay uh, thank you very much uh, first of all uh, uh, i'll take a while to explain all right uh, the scenario what has happened in the last 20 years hmm. and what should be doing hmm. Uh, actually, uh, after the end of Cold War, uh, the, the world expected a bit of peace, but it did not happen. We ended up into global war, mm. terror, and then mm. that destroyed a lot of countries, economies, mm. and social stuff, mm. all that. So, uh, what happened uh, in, in, during that process? Towards the end of it, 12, 13, 14, when President Obama wanted to exit from uh, Iraq, so he now was uh, sorry from Afghanistan. So, the focus of world. shifted from atlantic to pacific indo pacific that is number one uh, uh, and indo pacific the countries are very important australia japan uh, and china hmm. so basically they shifted this side to checkmate china all right now they got you know that that's one hmm. that that has implications hmm. on, on on the entire world aukus for example one okay AUKUS is one, mm. Quad is another one, mm. and Quad has uh, four important countries: India, United States, Australia, and Japan. Uh, moving forward from there, they are now working on another Quad in the Middle East. Mm. That has four countries: India, United States, Israel, uh, and UAE. Mm. So these two, both the Quads, when you look at it, they have implications for Pakistan mm. uh, economically. and strategically mm. uh, what happens when when you work on the uh, asian pacific uh, indo pacific strategy quad uh, there is a huge transfer of technology and uh, logistics there are mutual contracts also between the united states and india mm. there, are, there are a number of contracts uh, uh, that have taken place that's exchange of logistics exchange of communication exchange of information all this combined together uh has created that trying to create that wall to stop china so right. rise which is expected to be uh, 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 an economic power ahead of united states hmm. by 2030 hmm. so to stop the rise of from a unipolar to bipolar that the world is moving or or to stop that they are now making india stand here from this so when india stands up here it is in the middle east mm. the, both the regions are very important for pakistan all right so it has implications on our security so mm. what are we doing that's one exactly that's so very really important okay now mm. what what we are doing we we have to listen and see what the others are doing mm. what they think about it mm. and uh, then so so what are we doing in this session uh, number 1 and to both uh, on 19th we are first listening to the american point of view on mm. this As, as the G star is concerned, Robin Rafael is uh, here. She'll be talking to us on the Indo-Pacific strategy and security implications. All right. The second uh, on the same day, mm. the second speaker is a Chinese speaker. We'll be talking of China-U.S. rivalry. Mm. So that's he is another interesting. That's very interesting. So that when these that. two <laughs> guys talk about it, mm. then we have our own guy right, giving us the options. Mm. So we'll be coming out, inshallah, at the end of this. 
for policy option for government of, government of mm. Pakistan for mm. policy makers in Pakistan as what we should be doing. That we well thought, well researched uh, approach that we have. When you look at policy options, Pakistan has time and again said that it wants to have uh, uh, a, a, a similar relationship with both the United States of America and also China. Do you feel, uh, I mean I'm asking you this before uh, the G-Star conference happens, seminar happens, do you feel Pakistan can manage to balance its relations with the United States and China at the same time? Or do you feel there needs to be a tilt somewhere, somehow? Uh, I think uh, uh, Pakistan has suffered a lot in the last, and we need to concentrate on our, our economy and mm. other things. And therefore, we need to stay away from getting into some trouble mm. with any one of them. Or taking any sides, basically. Yeah, any side what side. Side. That is one. Mm. We, we, for us, United States is important. Our exports are to that side strategically, technologically, they're very important. At the same time, we have a long relationship with China. Mm. So we have to trade it very carefully. And the path is very clear mm. that we need to stay friendly mm. with both of them, do business with both of them, mm. and ensure our own national interest. That's the bottom line, that we must ensure achievement of our own interests. Mm. And when we work on that, it is not against anybody. Mm. neither against China, neither against Pakistan. Rather, if we can work like that, we can act as a bridge between the two and to help resolve some of the tensions that there are. How important or difficult is the road from geopolitics to geoeconomics for Pakistan? Oh, okay. Uh, we, we are actually into geopolitics and geostrategy for the last uh, many years. Mm. We stuck in Afghanistan. Mm. We have on the eastern side, we, we know wars and all that stuff. So it is not an easy track, mm. but we have adopted and we've taken that step. I think that's a good step and uh, the entire uh, nation supports it. Uh, I think good initiative, it will have challenges and uh, I think if traded carefully, we should be able to cross the bridge and move forward on this. More so when we achieve connectivity to the uh, Central Asia and all that, so our mm. economy should pick up. When the economy picks up, we have more in our pocket, we can do much more in other areas also. Mm -hmm. In the strategy, in the politics, in mm. the foreign policy, they all depends on the economy. That is so true. Coming to military technologies, we see a lot of emerging te technologies. I think the way technology is emerging in the last decade or so has been unprecedented. Now in this whole arena of emerging technologies, there are diverse military applications as well. Uh, they are of course making the whole arena of uh, the world or uh, regional security landscape more complex. Do you feel Pakistan is adapting well as far as this fast-paced uh, uh, technological explosion is concerned? Okay. Uh, that's a challenge that Pakistan has this time. Why? Because because of the Indo-Pacific strategy, India is going to get downloaded with a lot of technologies of this type. Mm. And that's planned also. Uh, these contracts are meant for that. So the new technologies that are coming into the region obviously will have our own difficulties mm. or challenges that we face. So I, I, I believe so. Uh, our our uh, planners are aware of it. And I think uh, we have started moving in that direction. We are so far okay, but we definitely need to work in that direction. Research-based policies need to be formed, which are long-term. And in my view, it should be uh, indigenization-based uh, uh, research that should take our technology in direction. Because we must have our own technologies. Mm. We are now into different arena, we, uh, more than uh, you know, uh, 10 years back it was different. Ten now we are in the space, yeah. that space technology and the drone technology has become so, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, well uh, maneuvered that uh, uh, this is what we, is going to be the future as uh, far as uh, technology is concerned and military is artificial concerned. Artificial intelligence, hmm? space, hmm. Uh, uh, laws, weapons, uh, the space weapons. So all these things and, and, and the one, one more thing about these technologies is, uh, there are not many or are not clearly defined rules at internationally so far. People are developing how much where you know that that's also another area. Mm. So there is a there is a task ahead, and we have to move forward and pick up the pace as far as technologies are concerned. And we one session and this is. Uh, 
concerning the uh, emerging technologies and warfare in mm. uh, these star That is why I asked you this question. Well. Okay. Sir, also, uh, we are seeing a lot of militarization or weaponization in space because you mentioned space. I'd like to add to that. Can Pakistan join in the race? Do you feel this is going to be the future as far as military, uh, military warfare is concerned, that the next wars are going to be uh, uh, held in space and not on Earth? What is your uh, point of view on that? The, the wars on Earth means land warfare, mm. wars in the air means the air, air mm. wars, and then space application to it mm. becomes the aerospace power. Mm. So that is how the things go. The world is moving, you know, um, from um, a slow uh, engagement to long range engagement. You know, mm. earlier on, 30, 40 years back, we used to be engaging aircraft within one, two kilometers. Now exactly. it's 150 kilometers. Exactly. So then it is a space war. Mm. So we have to move in this direction. But one caution that I would like to add is that we do not have to compete. We do not have to run into the race. All right. We have to ensure that our deterrence capability mm. stays intact so that our security concerns are addressed and we can ensure our national interest. All right. Now, speaking of national interest and that Pakistan needs to stand out in, on its own, many nations, as you very well know, are working individually as well as jointly to achieve excellence and domination through this uh, technical or technological prowess. Do you feel Pakistan is well en route as far as adaptation of all of these technologies are concerned in the world? Uh, I think we have taken few valid steps and uh, some of these do not fall in the uh, domain of a uh, public domain. Uh, we are moving forward. Uh, uh, mm, I think uh, the emphasis I would lay down is on the indigenization of these technologies. Mm. That's the only way to have your own technologies. Mm. Because there is a word terminology used, uh, technological apartheid. Because the world powers who develop critical technologies mm. are not very willing to pass on those technologies. They mm. would like to give you true, a few stuff. So if we want to, which we want to, mm. ensure our interest, mm. be counted for in the international community, mm. we got to have our own technology. All right. Finally, I want a very short answer to this, sir. What in your point of view need to be the contours of global policy framework in order to he help build a world that is more stable? and uh, a, a more a stable regional order as well because we are seeing a lot of issues concerning uh, uh, this region and the world in particular. Yeah, I think uh, very pertinent uh, uh, globally, regionally and our We mm. need to achieve, we need to contribute towards the world mm. or, or the global security mm. and we be, we be an effective member. We need to ensure regional stability mm. and we need to secure Pakistan. These are the three objectives that we have. Mm. Yes, so, so to, to be there in the world, we must engage the world power. Mm. And important countries must have very, very strong diplomacy to mm. engage with them and be part of all the uh, forums that are uh, ending up into discussions and, uh, and, and some agreement. So we need to be there and be uh, engage the world powers to be That is one of All right. When it comes to region, mm. we need to watch for what's happening in the region. Mm. And we need to trade very carefully, like you just said, uh, our presence in the region, we are close to the United States, we may be far away from them. Mm. We have CPAC to be protected, mm. we are close to China. CPAC is our national interest. Mm. So we need to ensure our national interest have balanced approach to between China and uh, United States, not become partners, right. rather become a bridge. Mm. Technologically, the third step mm. is develop your own technologies. All right. And let's hope that Pakistan moves in that direction and steadily, steadfastly, and in a manner that uh, a lot of countries uh, are, of course, make, make, I mean, make, that Pakistan can put itself in the Committee of Nations and be proud yeah. of all the achievements that it has made and will be making in the near future. Thank you very much, Air Marshal Farad Hussain Khan, retired president of, uh, uh, not, I mean, you're retired from the Air Force, but you're currently the president of the Center for Aerospace and Security Studies. Thank you very much, sir, to have joined us. All the very best for this seminar on evolving global order challenges and opportunities that begins on Wednesday. Thank you very much. Thanks sir. for inviting and see you there in the seminar. Inshallah sir. Thank you. Let's come to our